What's up everybody, JJ here. Today we're checking out the Ghost 6 3D printer by Flying Bear. It's a pretty impressive budget printer, got some great specs and minimal missing features at a really good price. I feel like this is the price range of printers that excites me most and it's really great to see these really good features trickling down to the printers that people will actually buy. First off, a little disclosure, they did send this printer over for free. But as always, you've seen in my other videos, I'm not against destroying a sponsorship just to tell you how a printer really is. So you're gonna get a real review here today, and I really do like this printer. Another disclosure, this one specifically arrived with a damaged micro SD card in there. I don't know if it happened in manufacturing or shipping. Anyway, I got some testing done out of it through the USB port, and I really like it. And so I decided I'm gonna be putting this Big Tree Tech Manta board on there. And so I was like, don't, they wanted to send me a new board. And I was like, don't send me a new board just so I can do minimal testing on it. If I know I'm gonna put a new one on there anyways. I don't need to create more e-waste or to have an extra board laying around I'm not really gonna use. But I was able to do plenty of test prints through the USB port right there. I don't really fault the company for that. I don't know if it was on their side or it was on shipping side, but if something like that did happen, you could just send it right back to them. You'd open it, you'd see it's damaged, you send it right back to them. So I personally don't see that as a huge red flag, but I did want to mention it. The first spec we should talk about is the price. Currently on their website is $330, but on AliExpress, I found it for $303. So it fluctuates, there's different sales that go on. So I would say anything between 300 and 350 is the price range you're looking at for this printer. That's a great price for the other specs we've got on here. The big one is the Core XY motion system. That's something you normally only see on big expensive printers because it's a little bit more involved to get right. The last printer I checked out, the Ender 5S1, that one I think should have had Core XY for the price point. This one has it at a much cheaper price. The belts are wound in a very long and complex way to get to the hot end here but it means no motors are gonna be moving around. Everything's very lightweight for moving around here. It can go really quickly. But this one, it's so nice to see linear rods on here. They're just gonna last a little bit longer. They're, I think, smoother than V-slot wheels. And I think they're way more durable. I've had damaged V-slot wheels before, but I've never had linear rods and these linear bearings wear out on me at all. Another benefit there is that the bed here will raise straight up and down instead of being a typical bed slinger that you would normally get in this price range. Bed slingers move your print back and forth, so a tall print like this is more likely to tip over as the nozzle is moving back and forth across it. It also makes it way easier to shoot time lapses like this. You just sort of set a camera up and run. Versus on a bed slinger, the part is moving in and out, so your focus is gonna be all messed up with every single shot you take. Next up, we got the build volume. You've got 225 millimeters in the X, 210 millimeters in the Y, and 210 in the Z. So overall, a pretty standard build volume, just you get a little bit of extra length in that X axis. The next big benefit of a Core XY system like this is that this can be fully enclosed very easily. They've got this steel box, it's magnetic, so it is a steel box on there. That adds a lot of rigidity to put four solid walls on there. The top and the front are open, but it does make it really easy to enclose. They put this acrylic door on the front and then this umbrella thing on top, which I really like. You can press this button and kind of flatten it down for easier storage when you're not using it. Or, or pop it back out like that and clip it in on top. Clips in really easily. Really great for if you wanna get into higher temperature filaments. ABS will be way easier on here. ASA, way easier. But if you are using PLA, the enclosure is not gonna be beneficial. Since I always print in PLA anyways, I just put the door on here just to do this review to show you that it comes with a door. I probably wouldn't put it on there if you're just gonna be printing in PLA. Because with PLA, you want a lot of good cooling to get good overhangs on your prints. You want a lot of fresh air getting in there. The next big benefit to this enclosure is how easy it is to set it up. Since it comes already assembled like this, all you have to do is screw on the extruder on top here. You have to wire in the filament runout detector on the side. You screw in the spool holder on the left and that's basically it. You're ready to go up and running. So this is really great. There's no important things you have to get right. You're just screwing a few things in plugging a few wires in. But if you do run into issues, their user manual is one of the best ones I've seen out there. It's this big booklet, 44 pages in total, and it covers everything. This wiring diagram on the last page is amazing. This is so useful if you ever have any issues and wanna replace your main board or replace any of the parts on here. Everything is labeled really well. Setting up your first print, leveling your first print, 
setting up the software and slicer, a lot of maintenance and troubleshooting pages. This is a great little booklet and would be amazing for a first time user to have all these things explained and laid out with great pictures. And this is from a kind of budget printer. I would expect this type of documentation from a big company, from someone like Creality. This would be amazing and would make upgrading and working on your printer so much easier. They also give you every tool you could need on this printer. All the different sized Allen keys, a little wrench for all the different sizes, USB to micro SD card. I love offset cutters like these. These are really great for removing supports or removing issues from your prints. Some needle nose pliers. This is great for removing hot filament from a nozzle. Spare twist ties for cable management. A needle to help remove clogs from the nozzle. Even a stylus to use the touchscreen with. Just about everything you could want. So I love to see that when a company gives you everything you need. They also give you a fully assembled hot end. This is great for a printer you're gonna keep around for years. After a year of solid printing on there, things happen. There's these tiny wires with the thermistor and the heater cartridge that goes in there and one of those might break. You might be trying to get a failed print off or this or that. Whatever happens, one of those little wires break, you have a whole extra one here. This makes it really easy, especially for beginners, to just take the whole old one off, pop in a whole new one right in there, and you're ready to go. So this is great for a beginner on a beginner printer that might make some mistakes, might damage something, and you've got a backup right here in the box. Next, we should talk about the extruder they put on here. It's direct drive large gear extruders. Similar to the LGX extruder by Bontecht, it uses these big gears to push your filament. That gives more surface area gripping onto the filament, so it should be a lot better at flexible filaments than most typical extruders will be. Another really nice thing they did here that I've not seen on any other printers is to put this clear acrylic on the front. That way you can see the filament entering between those gears so you can really see if anything bad is happening. You also have exposed parts to the drive gears. That way if filament does get ground in there and you get some clog on the gears, it's really easy to clean them out without having to disassemble anything. And one last thing I do want to mention of how good this is, is how quiet it is. They're using TMC 2225s, which are basically just soldered on TMC 2209s, I think. Usually if you look up mods for budget 3D printers, making them quiet is one of the most common ones. And luckily this one comes with quiet fans. It comes with quiet drivers. When it's printing and I have my headphones on, I don't know what's printing in here. The last few printers I've been testing, both the Bamboo Labs P1P and the Ender 5 S1, those are both so loud when it's printing in here. Even if I have headphones on, I can still easily tell that it's printing. This one, I usually forget it's even running. The menu system on here is almost childish in all these pictures, but that's really not a bad thing to have so many easy to use and easy to understand pictures. There's also a lot of great controls in here. You can go in here and turn on and off things like there's a floodlight in there. There's a fan on the back you can turn on and off. All these extra settings, you can turn on off a button sound so that every time you press a button, it beeps. Or you can turn that off so it won't do that, which is something I think Creality could learn from this. And a lot of great easy to use buttons, simple things like heating up your nozzle. It's a single press, gets it up to temperature so you can swap out filaments. Simple stop button turns it all off again very easy to use and easy to understand. When it comes to the test results of this printer, the first little cube I did failed because it wasn't close enough to the print bed. The second test cube finished, but it did have a few odd artifacts in it. Then I did a retraction tower to find that one millimeter retractions were gonna be the best on this printer. Then I wanted to go for a benchy. Results are pretty good. There's still some retraction issues here on the front hole and a few odd artifacts. It's not a perfect print, but still some really good results with minimal tuning. Then I switched to some silk filament and tried a speed benchy. This one finished in 30 minutes, but did have a lot of issues. I wanted to see how fast I could push this printer. I think most of the issues here are software and Marlin firmware related. If I put Clipper on here, I think the hardware could really handle some high speeds and accelerations because there really isn't much ringing artifacting showing up on this print. Face mode prints are really good at showing off if you have any Z-banding issues, since everything will be printed without any retractions to it. And this turned out great. It is a silk filament, so it's gonna show off any imperfections we're gonna get in this print. Overall, really great results. Now there's no such thing as a perfect printer. This one has a lot of good things to it, but there's definitely some downsides and some pretty big ones. 
The first one is auto bed leveling. There's no auto bed leveling. It's all gonna be manual. You've gotta to learn to use these wheels really well. It's not horrible at the price point, but it would just make usability, especially on a beginner printer, way easier if you don't have to fiddle with that. You don't have to deal with that. All your prints are gonna work perfectly from corner to corner. And I will have to print that mod because once you move to printers with a bunch of auto bed leveling, it's so hard to go back to manual bed leveling on a printer. The other downside is that it's a PTFE lined hot end. As you can see with this extra one here, the piece of PTFE goes all the way in and all the way down and touches your hot, hot nozzle. That's not great for high temperature printing, which is kind of what you want the enclosure for. So I wouldn't recommend printing ABS on here more than the occasional thing. Because when you're printing at those higher temperatures, PTFE is gonna start breaking down somewhere around that 240 to 260 range. I've heard different manufacturers say different things. I'm always gonna err on the side of caution because it will start releasing some nasty chemicals, especially over time. So the occasional print, that might be okay, but I would recommend people changing this out for an all metal hot end. And I did email the company Flying Bear to see if they sell one or if they knew of a link to one that would work really well in this hot end. And I'll put that down in the description down below. Another thing I dislike about this printer is their use of this glass build plate. Luckily, they do sell a PEI option online. This, see, this is just a skirt on the print and it's that hard to get off. Luckily, this one would be pretty easy to remove. There's just four clips holding the bed down and you can use an Allen key to take those clips off. And luckily on their website, they do have an option to buy this with a PEI bed. I would recommend just buying that bed or buying a different PEI bed and replacing this glass bed. The next thing you should know about buying a cheaper printer this one and any cheaper printer is that the parts in there are going to be more generic parts. The belts on here don't have labels on there. The bearings on things aren't going to be some name brand bearings. They're going to be some generic bearings. They're working great for me now. They could work great for years. They could wear out a little bit faster than some name brand parts in there. I'm not saying you need to spend a bunch of money to buy a better printer or to scare you away from buying cheaper printers. And it will most likely work great for years. I just don't want people to think Core XY is Core XY and buying an expensive Core XY printer is the same as buying a cheap Core XY printer. These belts could wear out in six months. They could wear out in two years. You could see that as a downside that you might need to repair some things as things break. Or the upside is you'll get to learn as things break. I think this printer has really great bones and say the belts break after six months. Then you get to buy some better belts, learn how to wire up some Core XY belts, and then boom, you've got some great belts on there for a $20 upgrade down the road. And then in a year, if the bearing starts making some noise on you, you get to buy some better bearings, learn how to install better bearings on there. That's another $20 upgrade down the road. Say something else goes out, the lead screw messes up, one of the motors goes out two years down the road. I personally have learned a lot with upgrading my AnyCubic Mega S. That's with little incremental things as I want to put better parts on it. You can change out one part, put a new one on there, learn about that new part, how to install it, how 3D printers really work. If it is a hobby for you, start with a cheaper printer and upgrade it as you go is a really great way to learn. So I think that just about wraps up my thoughts on this printer. It's a really great budget printer. I would have loved this to be my starter printer. There's so many great bones on here, but also great things you can upgrade. And immediately there's things I wanna upgrade and mod and work on. There's these lights inside that you could add on more lights. There's a fan on the back. You could add a filter back there. Auto bed leveling, like I said, all metal hot end. So many little mods and things you could work on with this printer. If there was something I forgot to mention, let me know in the comments down below and I will answer your questions or any other questions you might have about this. Well, I think that just about wraps it up. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.